Welcome to Handy Quilter Watch and Learn. Have you ever had a block that's larger than your throat space and you've been stumped with how to quilt it? Well, today we're gonna to show you how to do that. I'm Kim Sandberg, studio educator here at Handy Quilter, and with me today is... Christina Whitney, another studio educator here at Handy Quilter. So Christina, you've got a big, big block today, and we've got to figure out how to quilt this. Yeah, are you going to sing the song for us? No, I'm not, <laughs> but you guys all know the song we're thinking here. I like big blocks and I cannot lie. You go, girl. You go. <laughs> Our maturity level is I know. dropping. Yeah. Um, okay, yes, I have a very large block here. Yes, yes, you do. And I love this block in here. Um, this one is actually bits and pieces left over from the quilt that's hanging here mm -hmm. behind us, isn't yep. it? Yep, and this is the Alaska quilt from Laundry Basket Quilts. And I did, I had a bunch of extra pieces because I didn't count very well. Uh, and, you know, when you're chain piecing. Oh, yeah. and, so I ended up with some extras and then I had some extra fabric. So I took those pieces and I rearranged them to create my own design. Love it. So I had a lot of fun with it, but it is too big for me to quilt a design using my pro stitcher. In one throat space. In one throat space. Even though you're using the Forte, like that's got a lot yep. of throat space. It's a big block. Yes. So how do we tackle this? So if I were doing this free motion, mm -hmm. I would, you know, just stitch the top part. Mm -hmm advance the fabric, stitch the bottom part. Um, but I wanted to do a block from the Pro Stitcher library. Okay. And so we, we do have a lot of issues that people have with picking the actual block that's gonna work because not every block is going to work with this following technique. That's right. It depends on the stitch out. So the main thing that you're needing to look for in your design is a design that will stitch the top half mm -hmm and then stitch the bottom half. Okay. Some designs will stitch one direction and they yeah. come down, stitch over here and then over here and then up here. and They kind of go all around the place. Yeah. Um, you need it to go in quadrants so that you are able to um, stitch it out without having to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Right, right. Okay? Okay. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a design. So okay. let's bring the machine over here. Okay. And I'm gonna show you the design that I originally picked out. It is in the Ann Bright folder. So this is on Pro Stitcher Premium. Okay. And it is called the Denali 8W Block. Okay, and Denali, how fitting with the Alaska. This is remnants of the Alaska quilt. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. okay, so that is the block that I was gonna stitch out on this. It's, it's not gonna be super dense, right. which is perfectly fine with me because I want the piecing to be more of the focus on this one. Right. But if I go to my Pro Stitcher tab in New Start and End, I'm gonna just use this scroll bar or my up and down arrows mm -hmm. so we can see the stitch path. Okay. So if I start coming down, you'll notice I'm in the bottom left-hand quadrant. We start watching that little green yep. um, bullseye. Yep. Is, looks like it's bouncing around there on the left side of the block. Yep. So it's in the top left, oh, now wait, the wait right. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We just crossed over. Yep, we're over just on the like right. Just like you're saying. Yeah. And then we're back down to the left. Oh, wow. And then over to the right and to the left. So this is not an ideal design to use. Right. But I did figure out a way that I could change this design mm -hmm. using Pro Stitcher Designer. Right. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps of moving that start point, like okay. taking a section of the design out and connecting it in differently Perfect. so that I can stitch just the top and then just stitch the bottom. I've chosen the design that I want to use in my oversized block, but I've noticed some issues with it that it's not going to stitch out half the design and then let me advance and stitch the other half. So I'm going to go in and make some changes to the design to kind of override where it's going to start and stop stitching. Now just a reminder that there are many, many ways that you can do this. I'm just going to be showing you the way that I did it on this particular um, block that I worked with. So the first thing I did was bring in my design. It's in the designs folder and it is under Anne Bright and it's called Denali 8W Block. I'm just gonna drag that onto my screen. Looking at my sequence view, sometimes when you bring in a design, if you open it up a little bit more here, you'll get this little icon that looks like the Z and it says it's manual. If you come across that, just right click on it, select it first and then right click 
and then we're going to go to convert outlines. At this point it has stitches so I just want to show you how it is going to stitch out. So I'm in my preview tab, stitch out, and I'm just going to click and drag this across here. So it's starting down at the bottom and then doing this top section, coming across and around. So it's kind of all over the place. I notice though, I'm going to go backwards in the stitch out here. I notice that at this point right about here, I have that whole top section stitched out, but I've got this section down here at the bottom. What I'm going to do is go into this point right here, and I'm going to force the software to recognize that as my new start and end point. So to do that, I'm actually going to go in and change this to artwork. So I'm going to right click to turn off my stitch out and I'm going to select all the items and change them to artwork. Let's open up our sequence view. I've got a whole bunch of pieces here. So I'm going to take all of the pieces and I'm going to tie them together to make it one unit. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is come over and I'm going to, to zoom into this section right here because that's where I want to force that new start point. So let's choose our zoom tool, draw in the little box. Excellent. Next thing I want to do is select my reshape or shape tool. And this is the little anchor point that I want to split apart. So I'm going to drag that over just to get it out of the way so I know what I'm working with. And I'm going to right click on it and hit split line. You'll notice now that this top section Let's actually zoom out so you can see a little bit better. This top section is on its own now, whereas the rest of the design is all together. Okay, so let's zoom back in. Now what I want to do is I want to select this one point and I'm just going to drag it away. I'm going to hit the return key here. And I'm creating a space between those two lines so that the computer doesn't want to try to connect those two back together again. What I want to do is to now connect this section back together again. So I'm going to go ahead and just select both of my pieces and do my control T. And now if I were to go back in, Let's give it some stitches. So preview, let's give it stitches, and then do the stitch out. It's going to start where I want it to start. It's going to stitch all of that top section. Then it does the bottom section and finishes off over there on the left. Now I know people are freaking out that my design's all messed up over here. That is fine. Let's right click to get out of that um, view there and I'm going to select the design and I'm going to zoom back in again. Now what I want to do is I want to manually bring this line back over to this point and then this line over to that same point. So I'm going to go up to my ruler up here and right click and I want to make sure I've got my snap to anchor points turned on, which it is. It's got that little check mark there. Okay, so now when I select my design and go into the shape tool I can click on this little anchor point and just pop it right over there. Click on this point and pop it right over there. Right click and let's refresh and let's go do the test and see how it stitches out. So select the design and stitch out. I'm just going to drag this along. Look at that, it's stitching the whole top, stitching the whole bottom and all the pieces are in place. So the next step that I'm going to do is go to the File tab, do a Save As, and I'm going to rename that design. We'll name it Oversize Block. For Blues Quilt. Ooh, I can type. 
and then I want to make sure that I've got that in the format that I'm going to be using, which I'm going to use an HQV. And I can put that onto a USB if I want or save it wherever I need to. Hit that Save button. And now I've got my design ready to take to my Pro Stitcher and stitch out on the oversized block. Christina, that was really great instruction on how to take that block and kind of take it apart and put it back together again so that it'll stitch out in the order you'd like. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually one of the best benefits of having designer is being able to make, I mean, you didn't change anything in the mm -mm. design except nope. the stitch out. Correct. You made it work. Yep. So I'm excited now to see this stitch. So let's, let's take okay. a look at what we've got set up here. Well, first thing I'm going to do is remove my basting stitch. Okay. Yeah. So remember back at the beginning, Christina basted all of this because we're working on it in little chunks going back and forth. Really important to always pull out those basting stitches. You don't want to just quilt over the top of them. That can uh, cause some of its own issues. <laughs> and I'm only removing the basting in this top section. Mm -hmm. So when I get to the bottom section, Kim, you're in charge of making sure I remember okay. to take out that other basting. I will do that. Oh, look, there's a little section there. And you use basting thread that blends, and so it's a little like a yeah. scavenger hunt. And do we have to grab? Let's grab. I pulled them all up when I pulled the top okay. up. Oh, there was one right there, one right there in the middle. There we go. Oh, I'll grab the scissors and we'll clip that <laughs> one. There's always one, right? There's Kay. always one. There we go. Yep, I think okay. we're good. Okay, so I'm going to bring the machine back on over here. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring in the design. I brought it over from a USB. Okay. So I'm going to close down the C and then I'm going to open up, I think it's on my E. And then I have to find the right design. Do, 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 do. I think it's that, is it that one. Yep. Sorry, the design was covering the name. Okay. So now you'll notice that my start and end point are on the middle. Right. It'll stitch the top left, stitch the top right, and around. Cool. Let's just double check that and make sure nothing changed on me. Stitching the top left, top right, it kind of goes back over to the left. I love and that. And then to the bottom. Okay. I love, I love how the block is exactly the same, just the stitch out is different. Correct. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to create an area here. Okay. And I'm only going to go to my halfway point. Okay. So as much really well, especially with the way you set up the design, as much as you want to stitch at one time. Yep, and I'm going to just actually come over here so I make sure I'm right at my center. I'm going to have some fun seams to go over on this. Ah, thank goodness for the glide fit. Yep. Okay, area tab, multi-point. I'm just going to come up, actually, yep, that was good. Leaving just a tiny bit of wiggle room. And you're just setting up here, and I'm just going to tap that so oh, we can excellent. see. Yep see your area as we are <laughs> we meaning i'm watching and you're doing <laughs> setting up the area you're supervising i'm supervising. moral support how's that so christina i'm noticing that you're setting this up with what we like to call just a little bit of wiggle room you're mm -hmm. not taking that laser right to the very edge correct you want it to fill the space but it doesn't have to touch the edge of your so you're you're close yeah there you go okay okay Beautiful. Fantastic. Let's make it fit. Let's make it fit. So that's only half of my block, that pink box. Right. That area is only the top half. Okay. So I'm going to go into my modify uh -huh. and I want to align it to my top. Uh -huh. And my, my block's not perfectly straight, so we're going to do a little tweaking. Okay. Um, and then I want to align it to the horizontal center. Gotcha. We'll refresh here. Okay. Now we need to resize. Yeah. So I'm going to go into resize. My lock is on. And I'm just going to keep doing that up button, and I'm going to try to fill it out to those sides. About kind of, yeah. Okay, now I don't like how up here it's yeah, kind of, kind of coming corner. out. Mm -hmm. And this part right here, I want that start point to be right down on that pink line. Right. So I'm going to do a little bit of back and forth between rotating and repositioning. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm going to reposition. I'm going to bring it down. Down just a little. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now this right-hand side over here is not 
lining up just right. Yeah. So I'm going to rotate it just a tiny bit. Okay. Line it up there with the bottom of your area. I see what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. So my, my main focus right now is the bottom line, getting that center of the quilt design to, whoops, to line up there. Gotcha. How's that looking? Looks really good. I was going to say, let's take the We've area off so center. we can see better, but then, then we won't have the area to compare it to. So. Well, I know, I know for me, what I tend to do is I will bring and actually put the machine right at the center of that quilt, and then I can use the crosshairs to make sure and kind of look at it and say, okay, do I have that lined up at the center? Yeah, with it's kind of, I know, the it's quilt's a, moving because it's, it's, it's right little, on that seam. Yeah. So it's close, though. Maybe drop it down just a tiny bit. Yeah. We're going to call that good. Now, the one thing I'm noticing is it's too far to the right. Yeah. So I'm going to bring it back to the left a little bit, trying to make even space on either side. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I'm noticing is the gap on the left and right is about the same, mm -hmm. but it's not the same on the top. No, I was just noticing that you're actually, it's looking like you're probably a good half inch down from the top at least. Yeah. So let's go back to the resize. I'm going to turn off the lock. Okay. Turn the height on. And we're going to increase that just a little bit. Right. So I'm pretty happy there. I think that looks good. It's going to fill the space. And this is a big block. So the yeah. quilting's not dense. Mm -mm. It's not like we're trying. you're trying to hit any specific points. You Correct. just want to fill the space. Exactly. I think it looks good. Yeah. And when I was picking this design, um, I was also trying to keep in mind I didn't want to hit the center. Okay. Because there is right. a big, huge seam there. Yeah. Um, and I did want it to fill out all the corners, mm -hmm. and the, the quilt has these diamonds going out towards the corners. Mm -hmm. So I wanted a design that had some kind of a shape going out toward that corner mm -hmm. um, to kind of emphasize that. So we'll see how this turns out. Yeah. Okay, the next problem here that I see is that if I say stitch, it's going to stitch and then I'm going to be hitting my bar. Right, and we don't want that. So what I need to do is I need to change my end point. Right. So we're going to go to the Pro Stitcher tab, New Start and End, and I'm going to refresh so we can see this whole thing. Okay. I'm going to use my end column, uh -huh. and I'm going to use the up arrow, and this is my um, segment. Yeah, design points. Yep, so I'm just going to go through anything that's below that pink line, I don't want to be stitching right now. Right. Whee! Maybe I'll use the scroll bar a little here, speed things up. Not a bad idea. Okay, let's go back to these now, just so I can be really accurate. Make sure you hit that exact center. Yeah. So it's very important that you understand the stitch path. Yes. And which way you are going. Oh goodness, I should have done more scroll bar. Well, let's do more scroll bar. Who knew? It's just the way the design was created. Oh, then it's going okay. to do all that stuff. You keep going here. We're getting close. Doing that inside. Okay. We're almost there. Okay. Promise? Oh, now oh. we went up to the okay. next quadrant. Okay. Tells so now you, which tells you. I'm going to back down. Yep. I'm going to come back down. Oop, too far. You're actually right going to have that right over it. Mm -hmm. So you notice here in the end, it says 718.51. So move that over. That's a your, yeah, your stitch <laughs> amount. <laughs> <laughs> the tools we use. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start at zero stitches. Right. The machine is going to stop stitching at 718. It's going right. to stop halfway through the design. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and stitch that out. And once we get to the end, mm -hmm. the machine is going to stop. Perfect. And I'm going to have it do a tie off because I'm going to do some other stuff. Kay. But you could turn the tie off off. Right. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, pro stitcher, quilt, run, proceed. Now, what thread are you using on this block? This is, again, micro quilter thread. Okay. From Superior Threads, it's the 100 weight.
Okay, so you're all done <laughs> quilting the first half. It first looks great. First half of that block. Yep. So what's the, what's the next step here? Well, the next step is similar to doing an edge to edge design where okay. we're going to do a drag and drop okay. and move the whole design as we move the fabric. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to drop my needle down right where it's at. Okay. I'm on my start and end point. Okay. And then I'm going to hit this drag button on my screen, mm -hmm. release my clamps. Gotcha. So make sure that the drag button turned green yes. and that it now says drop. I always do a double check and then yep. we're just going to very carefully and slowly roll the quilt. And if you're looking at the screen, you, you can see when. the design is moving up. That should be good right there. Okay. I'm not worried about that pink box. Right. So let's go ahead and put that topper or the ratchet down. We'll tighten up our fabric, smooth everything out, put our clamps back on. I still have my needle in. I still have that drag button activated. Right. Everything smooth. I'm going to give it a little wiggle, make sure I'm not pulling on the thread here at all or on the fabric. Mm -hmm. And Kim's going to remind me to make sure I don't have any basting left. Oh, I don't think I have any basting. Oh, we've got a little bit. Oh, we've got right a line down. there. Your eyes are much better than and mine. And there's one line right here at the bottom, too. Okay, I got Yeah, that I see one the one line. at the bottom. I haven't cut the bottom thread, so those might try okay. to pull out everything else. Do you want to hand me the scissors? I'll clip. That's how you get your squats in while you're quilting. <laughs> How many educators does it take to get your basting <laughs> stitches out? In this case, two. two. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ready to move on. Ready to move on. Okay. I am going to now hit that drop button. Okay. My design is lined up with the top half. Uh huh. I can now lift up my needle. Right. And some people, depending on the block and how accurate you are, you can even just skip this next step and just leave the threads connected. Uh huh. I want to be as accurate as I can on this right. one. So I am actually going to break my threads okay. or pull up my bobbin thread. And you did tie off there, so. Correct. You're good. Yep. So I'm just going to snip that real quick. Okay. Now I mentioned that pink box, our area box that we've got right now, that was from the top half. Right. It's no longer valid. So I'm going to go to area and clear. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hit this baseline button just because it was still active. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to my start button and horizontally start I'm, point. Mm -hmm. I'm at that start point, but I'm going to look vertically and just give my little bit of wiggle room with right. the actual piecing. Okay. So I'm looking at the quilt top here and I'm going to do a multi-point. Okay. And I'm just going to do the same thing that I did on the top half, okay. but I'm going to do it for the bottom half. Create an area with that little bit of wiggle room. Yep, just a little bit, just like the edge of the hole on the glide foot is. Mm -hmm. It's a good measuring tool. It is. And this is where it really pays off when you're creating an area to take the time to be precise. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my halfway point. I'm looking at the screen, um, kind of, and right about there. That's good. Okay. Okay. So now looking at this, I've got a couple concerns with this bottom right hand section. Yeah, that's outside your area just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my machine over and I'm going to just go ahead and drop the needle in my start and end point. Okay. Because that's going to be where I can always come back to. Mm -hmm. That's going to be my home base, I guess right. you could say. Okay, I'm gonna shrink the height of the design just a little bit. Just a little, okay. So modify, resize. I've only got the height turned on and I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. Now I could rotate it a little bit, but that's gonna impact that yeah. top half. And so, how it'll line up across yeah. the center. So I'm not gonna really worry too much about rotating. I am gonna take it one smaller. I've got a little bit extra gap on the bottom left mm -hmm. than I do on the bottom right. But again, riding by yeah. on a horse, oh. you're not going to see it. Well, when this is, I mean, <laughs> this is a quilt that you're making to be used to. Yeah. It's not yep. like it's going to be a show quilt. Yep. So, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to say I'm happy with that. Looks good. We're going to call it good. I'm going to baseline it. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to lift up my needle just to be safe there. I'm going to go to the Pro Stitcher 
new start and end. And when I baselined, my end button got switched all the way to the very, very end. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do now is move my start point to that midway mm -hmm. where I ended. Right. So if I had recorded the number of the end. I know what it is. It was like seven something. It was 718. But just it had in, seven. Just put in 718 and see how close it gets you. And then, ah. oh, look at that. You're just going to have to move it a little bit. I think it was, so now I'm going to move, move it, it back, up. back. Yeah. Nope. Oh, okay. you just see, bounced that, over it. Yeah. Well, and I intentionally bounced over it to make sure that I knew for sure Correct. which way it was going. Exactly. So that okay. at least got you in the ballpark. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. You could also use your auto button, but there's uh -huh. so many different times it goes over. There's a lot of points that yeah. meet up right there, too. Yep. Okay, let's go ahead, and I'm going to refresh the area so we can see this a little bit better. And I'm happy. I've baselined. We're going to go ahead and stitch it out. So Pro Stitcher, Quilt, Proceed. And we'll watch the second half of this gorgeous design stitch out. All right, Christina, it's finished stitching. Yep. You're bringing up that bobbin thread. It looks so good. Christina, I love the way that this block turned out. I am happy with it. The quilting is just blends mm -hmm. and because this, this block really is about the piecing. Yeah, this is one of the, the more intricate blocks for the whole quilt. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted that to kind of stand out a little bit. Hopefully this answered the questions that you have about how to make a design work in that really, really big block that you've been dying to use, but you're wondering how you're going to quilt it because it doesn't fit in your throat space. Yep. It's all about changing your start and end points. Mm -hmm. Drag and drop, stitch out one part at a time. Make it work. That's it in a nutshell. Exactly. <laughs> so what is going to be the next block in this blue series? We are going to do a little bit of grid work and okay. continuous curve. Oh, some of your favorites. So we'll do a few blocks, but um, yeah, we're going to work on that technique next time. Awesome. Well, be sure to watch out for that. And for more great quilting content and ideas, be sure to give us a like and subscribe. And remember that we have a new video premiere every week at noon on Tuesdays, Mountain Standard Time. Be sure to join us again next week and have fun quilting. Thank you.